Now, I don't know if any of you have been paying attention. I happen to pay attention because um, this is how I always felt. It never seemed right to me. But a study just came out that said, after decades of research, that depression is not a chemical imbalance. <laughs> so, of course, you know, I'm sure the pharmaceutical companies are turning over in their graves that they're not in yet, but, you know, and, you know, I'm sure they're going to be coming out with their own self-funded <laughs> studies that debunk that. But I've always felt that that's the case. There are multiple reasons for depression. And I was going to actually do a separate video on this, but I laughed because one of the main reasons, well, there's several reasons, but one of the reasons is verse 12 right here. And so we're going to talk about depression, some of the causes, some of the solutions, um, and it's starting with verse 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. So what is hope deferred? It's unmet expectations. And they're soul crushing for a lot of people and people can't get around it. Um, or they don't know how, or they don't realize that they can. They just kind of seem to wallow in it. Okay. So what are some things that you think might be hoped deferred? Comparison. I'm sorry. Comparison. Well, compare. Yeah. Comparison. And, you know, like problem. where, when you hold on to, uh, what you thought your life might look like, and then what it ends up and not, you know, you got to figure out how to be okay with where it's at, basically. That's, that's right. I mean, when, it can, it could be yeah. a lot of things um, like uh, your a marriage, a marriage that's crumbling, right. Or, you know, it's, you wanted the expected one thing, but it's, it's not going well. Children who've gone AWOL in more than one, in more than one way, you know, a career, that doesn't look anything like um, what you expected, you know, but empty bank account, <laughs> you know, I don't know. You, you hope that has never been, didn't end up being expectations that didn't end up being at all what you pictured your life being causes depression. So I think my biggest one is unanswered prayers. Like, for my grandson and for his healing and to see him suffer in a body that doesn't work. Oh. It's so hard. And now I had to really work on it this week, especially because now it's a blessing that he hasn't had seizures. He's 12 now. He'll be 13 in September. He hasn't had seizures for two years. It took forever to get him to that point. Okay. So now it's like he's coming into the reality of he's in a body that doesn't work. And it's just heart wrenching. And I try to, if I put myself there, I'm gonna go down fast, you know, because now he's like biting himself, you know, he'll just bite his arm and he'll kind of hit his head. And it's, it, the neurologist is saying, this is typical when they come to the reality of where, where they are. Because before he was on so much medication, it just kind of kept him like a zombie. And I, I always got to say, and this is selfish of me, but I always got to say, but he's my special love grandson because he's just so happy because he would just laugh at everything and be joyful at, at just food, like, you know, just happy like a 10 month old. But now that he's come into the reality of it, it's like he hates his life. And um, even to the point the neurologist with my daughter said, my daughter was like, I sure it could be the medication. I'm thinking chemical changes in his body, his hormones, and that does change how your body reacts to things, you know, and all this. And um, she said the verbal ones, because he's he can't talk, he can't walk. He he's the only thing he gets to do is eat. That's it. I'm telling you, it's just a, it's just horrible. But um, yeah, it's but he she said the children that are verbal in a situation when they're biting themselves this is a horrible thing to say but this is what she said and she was being straight up is I hate my life 
I hate my life. Or they're hitting their stuff in the head. I hate my body. And then I'm thinking, oh my, I don't know if it's better that he can't talk or not. You know, like this is horrible. Um, but I was, I sunk pretty deep in that because I pray the whole time he's here on Sundays, I have Kenneth Hagen on, girls. I have it all, you know, the word of faith, everything. I even get old school. Who is it? Catherine Kuhlman playing on YouTube, <laughs> thinking, you know, let's get the Holy Spirit in here. And I'm praying, I'm <laughs> casting out demons and I'm anointing him. And I am even giving him communion, homemade communion. I am praying, you know, Xander, if you understand me, receive Jesus. I'm reading chapters to him. I mean, this is something, this is 12 years. And that is hope deferred for me. It almost took me down. Not that I doubted God. Like I, I went outside and said, God, I don't doubt you. The reason I'm so sad is because I know you're real and I know your word is true and I don't have the understanding of what are you waiting for. And I woke up the next morning. I didn't want to get out of bed, you know, and I'm thinking of him and thinking he can't get out of bed. You know, what is it like to lay there? And I just got, I just started saying, I got joy, joy, joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. Next thing you know, I like wrote a song uh, based on that song, but like praising God, like, yeah, nothing can take my joy because someday I know he will be healed one way or another. But anyways, hope deferred. That's what that means to me. When you see people suffer and you want to be Jesus to them, like we're supposed to be, not like me, you get what I'm saying, like Holy Spirit in me, but, and, and it doesn't, and, and it, the prayer is not answered. That's a perfect example, April. I mean, you couldn't have said it better of, of it's, you know, crushing, um, especially when you know, in this case, God is the answer, you know, and uh, there could be some nutritional things that could help him. I, I don't know the extent of his, uh, of his debilities, disabilities, uh, but, um, you know, in this case, God is the answer. And he is the healer and, and we can only put our hope in him. But you've also used the right solutions as well, which we'll get to some of those is the praise in your heart and the thankfulness in your heart and the joy in your heart. You didn't stay there. Um, yes, you didn't stay there, which was the right thing to do. And because you used the tools to pull yourself back out of that, which is awesome. So that's good. His mom, though, is, you know, we just need to pray for her. I don't know if she's on here, Angie, but it's, you can imagine day in and day out. And it, she even had a Jesus encounter where she had a vision of Jesus. And Jesus told her it's a matter of time with Xander. So that gives us, it's a hope right there is a drop of hope. Mm -hmm. But like she said, mom, now that I know he's for real and he could heal him and he does it. And I see him suffer every day. It's hard. And I have, I said, just be honest when you talk to God. That's all I know to tell you. Because just, she goes, oh, I already know. Because he read, when she had that encounter, he told, she asked him one thing, but he answered what she was thinking. Jesus did. <laughs> so she goes, I already know. He knows what I'm thinking. <laughs> but <laughs> I, what I did, and I don't want to take much time, but I feel like I can share with you guys and you'll pray with me. But what I did is I started saying, um, I always ask Holy Spirit to intervene and intercede in all my prayers. They're made righteous, fervent, faith filled. I have this little thing. I won't go through all of that. But I said, um, Holy Spirit, intervene and intercede with every step I take. Every step that I take, let it become a living prayer of praise from heaven to earth that cries out to God in heaven saying, thank you for healing Xander. Thank you for the new body parts that you've given him. Thank you because I know he's being healed along the way. And thank you. Thank you for putting joy in his heart. Thank you that he's in a pain-free body. So that's my, so when, you know, it says pray without ceasing. That's what I do. So my intention of every time I walk is a praise that he will walk too. That's good, April. And, and, and you sounds like you're doing all of the things, you know, and just leaning into him and seeking him and having faith in him. And, and when the healing comes, it will be all, you know, all the glory will also go to him, you know, and, and that's just, that's perfect. And it will, and it will come and we will pray for you. Let's, let's just do that. 
right now. And if anybody would like to join in as well, but Lord, you know, you know, Xander's needs, you, you, you know, exactly how to heal him. You, you know what this precious little boy is going through and, and we place him in your hands and we have faith in you and we trust in you. We know that you are the healer and that when we cry out to you, you hear us and you heal us, Lord. And so I, I take your word because we know that your word does not return back to you void. And we place this little boy in your hands and we accept your healing for him because we know that you have heard us. And, and we thank you so much for that, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. Thank you, ladies. Love you guys. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, so... So that's unrealized expectations, and I could not have said it better, but that's, you know, that can sink us into depression if we don't use all of the tools to pull ourselves back out of it again. Um, purpose. You don't have one. <laughs> so <laughs> when we have no purpose, it sinks us into depression because we, God didn't create us that way. He foreknew us. He uh, he created us for a purpose. We, he did not just put us here for no reason. He actually have, have, we have books. Every day has been pre-written about us. And when we are not uh, walking in that, we don't have goals. We don't have a target. Uh, we haven't, we have nothing. We've set nothing out there to achieve. It sinks, sinks us in to a depression. And so we need to have a purpose, even if we start out with just a small purpose. Say it's, I want to lose five pounds in a week. Well, then you have to put that in place, okay? You, you have to say, it has to be specific. How much weight am I, do I wanna lose? How much time do I want to do it in? How am I going to do it? You know, I'm going to walk every day. For the next week, I'm going to walk every day. Um, I'm going to skip breakfast. So there I have taken seven meals off of my plate. I'm going to eat less. Um, I'm going to not have, I'm going to ditch that pop for the week. And, uh, and there you go. Five pounds later at the end of the week, you, you have set a goal. You've decided how you're going to do it. It's in writing. You're looking at it every day. Um, and you have achieved it by the end of the week. Okay. And you can do this in every category of your life, your family. How do you want to show up as a wife, as a mother, as a parent, um, your career, um, what is that? What is your goal? What is your purpose? All of these, your health, all of this should be in writing. You should have a journal where you have written down what you want each of these areas of your life to look like. And then every day you set goals on how you're going to achieve those. You write out a schedule. You have it in writing. You put it, look at it every day. You look at it before you go to bed at night. Um, just, just the having it in writing. Do you know that when, and I think I've said this before, just so, so you have three to five goals that you're going to write down for tomorrow, whatever, you know, that is that you're setting out for your day. Just the act of checking off one of those things increases your serotonin and your serotonin and your dopamine levels. It improves your mood. It's an actual chemical boost. Um, so it literally is, uh, you know, wipes away that helps to wipe away that depression. When you have an actual uh, goal, you've met it. You're, you're walking towards a specific target. You check it off. You come out of that depression because you are moving towards something and you're, and you're being intentional about it. You have to have intention every single day. I mean, most people get up, roll out of bed, 
you know, throw their clothes on, run out the door, and they come home at the end of the day, and they don't even know what they accomplished, if anything at all. And it's a cycle, a vicious cycle. And in their life looks five years down the road, it looks the same as it did five years before. Because there's no, there's no purpose, there's no plan, there's no goals. Uh, you're just letting life happen to you. Instead of taking the brains and designing and creating your own life and sitting down and asking God, uh, not only that, he gave you a purpose, asking him, what is it? You wrote my story out, Lord. Tell me, you know, let, sit down, have a conversation with him. What, what did you, what is, what am I supposed to be doing? You know, and the more you do that, the more you write down your goals and your expectations and you live with intent every single day on paper, on purpose, um, you pull yourself out of that depressive uh, place that you're in and you have a reason to get out of bed in the morning. It, it fills you with joy because you have a purpose now. You have goals. You're seeing accomplishments. Um, it makes a huge difference in your life. And also, when you say you say you created you 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 uh, achieved that five pound loss in one week, you you put your mind to it. You see, oh look, I create, I did this. It changes the next thing. It changes your self perception. Okay, because this is the next thing that causes um, depression is your identity, who you look at yourself as being. Okay, if you have poor self perception, poor idea, you know, don't like yourself. A lot of people are walking, talking, hate themselves. You know, they, they don't like who they are. It causes depression. They have what I call no self integrity as well. They've learned to know that if they say I'm going to do such and such, they never do such and such because they have a lifetime experience of never doing as they say that they're going to do. So a lifetime of experiences, people saying things to them, um, environment, a lifetime of, of things that have created this self-perception, this identity, this box that they think that, okay, this is me. And they don't break out of this box that is now created, self-created, okay? Um, and they don't bother to try to write a new story. They've just accepted this identity. It causes depression um, because, Depression. yes. They don't up in there. Yeah. They don't like themselves. And they've decided that this and they, and, they, and they have accepted that identity and not not realizing that they can change that story. They can change that identity. They when they real when you realize who you are in Christ, there's a lot of starting things where, you, where we have started. And we've talked about some of those things, you know, the heart healing, forgiveness for yourself and for others. Um, writing your story, changing your self-perception. And when you start, start with these little goals and you start creating these habits, you, you one good habit, okay? Um, well, look, I, I managed that. So then you want to do the next thing. Oh, I'm going to start exercising every day. And so then you start, um, oh, well, look at that. Now I'm going to clean my house. <laughs> you know, these, these good habits, once you see that you were able to achieve the one, then you want to do the next one, then you do the next one, your self-perception starts to change. You know, you pull yourself out of this depressive state. You start to motivate yourself. You see, oh, I can achieve these things. You start changing your story. You start changing your self-perception and who you decided that you were because you realize I'm not that person. Those, those are lies that God, that Satan put in my head. He is the liar and the father of lies. And uh, you have to realize that, oh, that's, that's not who I am. That's a bunch of baloney that Satan is filling my head with. We have to realize Ephesians 6, 12. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, okay? God, Satan wants us stuck in our 
this this box that we have placed ourselves in. He wants us to stay there, you know, and not realize that there is a whole new world out there that that we can create with God, you know. Um, so it, it is also helpful to realize that you're not fighting flesh and blood. You are fly, fighting against Satan himself. Um, so this is also going to help you to show up different because you realize this, this is not just my self-perception. It's lies I'm hearing in my head, you know. So that brings us to the next thing. What in depression more often than not is not just one thing. It is a combination of things. You're not just experiencing one thing, you're experiencing a combination of things. And so you have to peel back the layers. It, it's, it's, it's healing. You have to go through the steps of healing to get to this whole person. Um, but what are you focusing on? Where are your thoughts at? Most people, in fact, uh, there was a study done by Dr. Fred Luskin out of Uni Stanford University, and I don't think he's there anymore, that showed that 90% of our thoughts are repetitive and 80%, of, 70 to 80% of those thoughts are negative every day. So that's insane. <laughs> that, you know, that's, again, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Satan is there in our head 24 seven. And if we just let that go, like most people do, it's just a constant negative loop, okay? And you stay there and you don't take those thoughts captive. You know, you don't stop that stream. You just live there in that negative soup. Well, where else are you going to be but depressed? Because you live in those negative thoughts and you don't stop them. Um, something um, on on that subject and it's really neat kind of to relate it you know a semi truck it's big coming at you but it it yields to a stoplight very small you know and and that's you know kind of like those thoughts we've got to stop the truck you know on 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 that i don't know no, that's good. That's exactly right. And and that it is like a semi truck coming at you 24 seven, but you do have the power to stop it. You, and, but like I said, most people don't even, they, they just live in that they camp there. Right. And, and you don't stop the thoughts. You don't even try, but we have been directed and instructed. Um, Philippians four, eight, what are we supposed to think about? Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, those are the things that you're supposed to be thinking on. And so we're supposed to grab a hold of those thoughts the moment they start percolating because we can, you know, we can create some serious stories in our head. You know, you're killing off this person over here and killing, you know, you know, we've all been there. It's not pretty, but we got to stop that. We have to get out of that negative loop, out of those negative evil thoughts. And we're supposed to be thinking about these things in Philippians 4, 8, anything that's good. And then how do we flip that? How, how do we get into that peaceful state of mind? Philippians 4 tells you, Philippians 4.4, 4, we should be rejoicing in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4.6, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, we should always be in thanksgiving to the Lord. Let your requests be made known unto God. And Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. So that's where we should be, in thankfulness and in praise um, and in rejoicing in the Lord. And then he gives us the peace as long as we're not, again, in this negative soup where we're where we don't even bother to stop those negative thoughts. And, you know, garbage in, garbage out. That's the other thing. What is it that you're feeding your mind with? 
What are you sticking in there? Are you focusing on the news? We need to turn that stuff off. I get that we want to stay informed. Um, you know, have, have maybe your little time where you jump in, you get brush up maybe a little bit, but for the most part, that causes depression. There's been studies done that show how much depression and anxiety and stress focusing on 24 seven bad news at this point, that's where we're at, right? Not, not good. Um, so we should be turning that off and instead we should be filling our minds with the places where we wanna be growing. Where do we wanna grow? So we should be listening to people. So if we're interested in learning about health, we should be listening to you know, podcasts or videos about health. We should be listening to Christian speakers where we wanna grow Christian speakers that interest us. Motivational speakers, Christian motivational speakers, because when they're not Christian motivational speakers, you have to be careful because they're very new agey. Uh, so um, the right Christian motivational speakers. Um, so all of the places where you want to grow in, the topics that, and ask God, uh, the Bible, obviously, you know, the word of God, where you're going to literally grow. Um, Romans 12, 2, you're renewed and transformed by the word of God. That's where you should be starting at. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so, so be careful about what are you putting in your mind, because what you're putting in is what's going to come out. So that is very important. Um, so. I put a no trespassing sign up. In the morning, I have prayer time with, with Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And it's out on my, right now it's out on my porch because the weather, you know, it's not winter time. Mm -hmm. And I have a chair for them. And I know it seems kind of goofy, but I don't care because it works for my, for me. So <laughs> I've got the, <laughs> the father's chair and Jesus chair. And then Holy Spirit sits by me. And I, I'm like, I know you're all around me, but this helps me. <laughs> so I just talk to him like I'm talking to you. And it helps so much because the revelation light, as somebody was saying earlier, your revelation, you grow and that the revelation light comes on and God revealed to me. Um, I just saw the sign. It says no trespassing, no trespassing enemy of God's, my enemies and my body, mind, soul, and spirit, whether you be spiritual or physical, no trespassing, you will be fined double for your trouble and you will um, have, pay seven times restitution for anything you steal from any of these, by the way. So, and then I said, I call for the angels of blue, the reinforcers to come and get you, escort you to your place of torment before your time where you are to be held captive until your day of judgment and you are to shut up and you can't talk <laughs> to the body of Christ anymore in the name of Jesus. So if you want to trespass on any of this, just come on in. But um, I say that and uh, I'll tell you what, I've only been doing that for maybe, I think like two weeks. It may be longer, but it doesn't seem that long. And boy, does it make a difference because then when those thoughts like you're talking about comes up, it, like rejection or, oh, they don't like me, or, you know, I just say no trespassing, angels of blue, you know what to do. And um, and that's all I say, but it it triggers my, it triggers me into remembering God's word and what he has for me and my true identity. And my true identity is I'm a citizen of heaven Amen. And you just can't be trespassing against me. I'm a citizen of heaven. That's right. We are kingdom children and Amen. we should not be forgetting that. You know, we have, we now have authority because we've been giving that, given that because of God's death on the cross that gave us authority. Satan doesn't want us to know that, <laughs> you know, he tries to keep us in this weak place. Um, that's why we should be keep breaking out of it. What, you know, and, and using what God gave us, the gifts he gave us to be that shining light. Um, because we, we don't do an nth of what God created us to do, what we could, what we could step into. And, um, and that is my goal is to get all of us to where, to what Christ put in us. And so that we are those warrior women that we're talking about here, because that's how he created us. And uh, once we get that figured out, <laughs> who we are in Christ, 
we can step out that way. And it feels weird and it's uncomfortable and people might think we're weird. People might laugh at us. Oh my goodness, who cares? You know, that's where we gotta be. That's where we gotta get to. Uh, to, to be those warrior women, to be that leader, to show up, help other people, to get to that same place. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Getting everybody else there too. So that was my little tangent there. I got off a little bit. <laughs> where Where is that science at um, about depression? I really love that because, you know, there's been so many times chemical imbalance, chemical imbalance. You hear that, especially being a holistic, you know, nutritionist and all that. Mm -hmm. um, you hear sometimes it is, it can't, like you go through all these elimination processes and sometimes it is a chemical imbalance and you, then you can take different herbs and whatnot to help balance that. But, you know, the word of God never says that we know nothing has reign over us, um, according to God's word. And I believe it, you know, above all, it's a living word. It's true. Um, so where is that study at? I didn't know that came out. Uh, it was what I, for, I was going to go and see. Um, I, I saw it just at the beginning of the week, the beginning of this last week, and I was going to go and look at the study of my cell at the study, and I forgot to go do that um, so that I could actually tell you this is where the study is. Go look at it. Um, and I'll, I'll go and search up, and maybe one of you guys will find it before I do. But it was all over Twitter. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I knew it. <laughs> so, you know, um, let's see. So also here, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, uh, some more of thought, some more about our thoughts and what they cause. Um, when I and I was saying that we have to take our thoughts captive. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of Dr. Karen Leaf, but she's a neuroscientist, and she says that 87 to 95 percent of our illnesses can actually be tracked back to our thoughts, and that includes depression. We can actually create our own illnesses because of our toxic thinking, um, which is which is very bad. Our fears, our anxieties, our stress, our, um, our depression, like I said, our toxic loop that we're always in can cause up to 1400 chemical reactions in our body, um, causing a chemical chaos that causes illness. If, because like I said, most often than not, when we're at that point, we're living there, right? And so uh, we actually create the symptoms. We create the depression. We create the sickness or the illness, whatever it is, because we live in that chemical chaos that we're actually creating with our own thoughts and with our anxiety and our stress and our depression. We create it and then we manifest it. And so we have to become aware of our thinking and we have to stop that semi-truck like Melissa was saying, it's essential for our own health. Um, and another thing is you cannot come into, a, go ahead, Ladwan. I, you know, I was just thinking when you said that the 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 power of the scripture as though a man thinketh is he. And so it's imperative that, you know, I mean, the word gives us specific instructions on how to think. And you read them earlier, and that's what we just have to renew our mind. I mean, we certainly all get bombarded um throughout the day with maybe different things that may be happening with coworkers or business or family members or I think all of us may have someone that just can be a little bit taxing you know maybe with their toxicity and we just, you, you know you may not be able to completely avoid the person um and so you have to then guard your heart I mean he gives us the weapons you know that's why I love the women warriors you know we have our shield of faith we have the sword of the spirit the word of God so we got to arm ourselves against those fiery darts, put on the full armor mm -hmm. and, you know, okay, the enemy says this, well, what does God say about me? 
And so, you know, well, that's not true. The word says this about me. So I think that's the importance of, you know, rightly dividing the word and having that word that will rise up. And if we don't know a word for it, that counteracts what the enemy says. And that's, we can get a concordance. We can go on Google. We can, you know, find what does God have to say about that? If there's a promise, then we have the right as women of God to attach ourselves to that promise because he gave us authority. He said, I give you power to tread over. I give you authority. So sometimes we're asking, oh God, fix this, do that. But he's saying, look, I gave you the keys to the kingdom. It's whatever (laughs) you buy, whatever you do. So, you know, I have to encourage myself, you know, just like everyone else, you know, we have challenging days. So then I'm like, wait a minute, that's not true. The enemy just said that three times. So, you know, I get tickled. Sometimes I'll tell my friend, well, the enemy told me, no, why are we listening to him? <laughs> I mean, we know it's a lie. So because it counteracts what, what the word said. And if it doesn't line up with this, this is our truth. You know, so we have to, you know, what did the father say about us? So, you know, we have to choose to believe that and renew our mind with the word. And then we can fix our thoughts, make our imaginations line up with what God says about us and not what somebody else says, or, you know, an old thought or something from childhood or something, you know, someone said that was hurtful, you Mm -hmm. know, so casting those things down. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because it came up when you, when you said that, um, you know, as though a man thinketh it's he, So, you know, we have to not, you know, keep pondering on, you know, being sick or being whatever. Sometimes people will say, oh, well, that's just how you are. Well, no, you're however God says you are. That's right. That's what we have to choose to believe. That's good, LaDuan. And what you just said is funny because there's somebody that I listen to. um, I know April does, too. Uh, he says that people can, you just said it, people can tell you what the enemy told them all day long, but they have no idea what God is saying, <laughs> you know, and uh, which is ridiculous, you know, they can hear what the enemy is saying, but they can't hear God, they can't hear the spirit, you know, because they're listening to the wrong person, you know, and they don't, they don't take, say, wait a minute, the, the lies that they're hearing in their head, they don't take a minute to examine that and say, is that, is that truth? Is that a lie? You know, they don't stop and examine what they're hearing and, and decide where that's coming from and stop that toxicity, you know? So that's perfect. Thank you, Lidlon. Um, Can you just got her hand up? Oh, go ahead, girl. I would just want to say, I, I, don't, I don't know the young lady that was just talking, but I was listening to a sermon just the other day and he was saying how you have to, you have to hack because the devil will come with all of this stuff. You know, he don't want you to renew your mind. So he said, you have to handcuff your thoughts. And then once you handcuff them, you can, re- you know, ask the Holy Spirit, is it, you know, is this from God or is this from the devil? devil and then when you find out that the thought is from the enemy you apply the blood of jesus to that thought you tell that devil you know what say not bind you in the name of jesus and the blood of jesus is against you and now you pay seven folds for trying to come up against my mind in the name of jesus start you know you was just saying how we have to be holding you know everybody have to be held accountable or accountability partner or whatever so every time the enemy come he knows like you come with these weird thoughts you come with anything and i'm you know god's the bible says if the enemy is caught he must repay sevenfold so if he's you know if he you catch him you handcuff your thoughts you catch him playing trying to play with you you bind him up and you make him repay and i thought that that was like you know so good because you know what i mean so like you were saying so many times we just think that it's just a thought and you let it go but some thoughts become you know, they manifest if you don't get them under control. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's good, Tanisha. They, that's abs- absolutely what happens. Our thoughts, uh, how does that go? Uh, out of the heart, 
the mouth speaks. I mean, it, it just, it becomes manifest, you know, and that's what we really have to, to, to work against that we don't do that. And the right things come out of the heart <laughs> that the mouth speaks, you know, when you, when that ugliness pops out of your mouth and you wonder where that comes from, well, that's been sitting there, you know, and, uh, and resolved. Yes, unresolved, definitely. So those are things that we act, we need to actually resolve, you know, and, and get rid of. So, and another thing that happens when we are focusing on the negative and the toxic, and so in speaking about depression, we come into agreement. Oh, well, I have, you, maybe you're experiencing symptoms and you go in and the doctor says, well, you have depression. And so then you come into agreement with that and you decide, well, that's my identity. I have depression or I have this, or I am this. And then you decide that's who you are. We cannot do that in any, in any circumstance, unless it's a good thing, unless I am a child of God, I am healed. I am, you know, I am an authority. Those are the things that you come in the good, what you want. Those are the things that, um, Oh, we lost Tanisha. Okay, so um, those are the things that you want to take as your identity, not the things that you don't want in your life. So never come into agreement. And if it weren't so late, I have a story that I could tell you about coming into agreement, but it's the last thing that you want to do. If it's something that you don't want in your life, do not come into agreement with it. So you don't want depression. You don't say I have depression. And uh, then you work on the things that you need to do to come out of that and to create the person that you're supposed to be, that God made you to be. And can you awesome. tell us, can you tell us that story or do you need to go? I don't need to go. So if you guys are willing to listen, I, I can tell you the story. Here. Okay. So this really, I don't like this story actually, but this happened and I don't know, how long have you been in Wichita, Jessica? About uh, three, four years. I moved away for like three months. So okay. I've been here all my life, practically. Oh, you have, okay. Well, I don't know if you heard this, but it was on Caleb is where I heard the story. And then I was shocked and I heard it from the church I used to go to as well. Uh, but, um, There, and I'm, it's been a little bit of a while ago now, three or four years ago. Um, so I don't, I don't know that I have all of these details exactly right. But this woman, uh, I don't know if she dreamed it or she was hearing it in her head, but she heard that her daughter was going to be killed. And so she goes and she says, I heard this on the radio station here. So this happened here in Wichita. Um, so she goes, okay, Lord, but make sure that whatever is, whatever happens, that she's happy when she dies, that she's doing something that's making her happy when she dies. Okay. First of all, what parent on God's green earth would ever do that? What she did is she came into immediate agreement with whatever she was hearing. Okay. And she accepted that as agreement. It, she accepted what she was hearing in her head for whatever reason. Okay. Um, and she blamed it on God. She was, said that it was God who told her this. So that is exactly what happened. She was with, with her child. They were riding bikes. They were hit by a car. She was killed. And I think the mother is in a wheelchair. I don't know if she's since, uh, uh, I don't know if she was still in a wheelchair or she's since healed since then. So what she did is she came into agreement with the devil, said, yes, go ahead, but just make sure she's happy when you kill her. Basically, that's what happened. But that's not how the story goes. Nobody, that's when you hear it on Caleb, they talk about it exactly how she said it. They were blaming God for it. God told me that he was going to take my child. I was livid when I heard the story, okay? 
John 10, 10 says, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I came to give you a good life. Uh, you know, not, so when I, like I said, I was enraged when I heard the story because Caleb here, it's the Christian radio station and they're all in agreement. Nobody sees the lie in this story. Nobody's seeing it. And then I'm in church and I hear there's this nurse in my church. Uh, she had, I don't think she was the, the people's nurse, this, this woman and her daughter's nurse, but uh, she was on the same floor and she goes up on the, on the, on the, on the stage you know, and goes on and blasphemes. That's how I see it. Blasphemy, talking about how this woman, you know, God tells her that he's going to take her child. That, she, and I just, just, I just kept my mouth shut. I still probably at some point in time won't because she told the story from, you know, on the church stage more than once. And I'm just sitting there shaking my head. These people don't know their Lord and Savior, right? You're coming into agreement with something God would never do. So that is what I'm talking about when it comes in to coming into agreement. Check that stuff at the door. What is it that you're hearing? What are you coming into agreement with? If you don't want it into, in your life, you do not come into agreement with it. And you That's don't right. ever place it at Jesus' feet, ever. Exactly. I mean, I'm 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 on my soapbox here, <laughs> but well, I mean, Actually, the, the word said that He came to bear our sorrows, our grief. So, I mean, if you think even even I mean, our Savior, He, all of our sicknesses, all of our disease. I'm like, we have the we have the right to stand in faith and believe for that because that's what he said now we do have an adversary and he is called the deceiver <laughs> and so you said that earlier you talked about lies and deception and so unfortunately there are ways that seem right to people that are not right and the word says that as well so you know sometimes I feel bad for the father because I feel like he gets a bad rap too Right, um, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, like you think a non-believer is like, well, if that's how your God handles you, then I don't know that I want that. I can do bad by myself, right? And so I, I feel like this oftentimes the way non-believers may feel, not really understanding that we have an adversary. Um, so I definitely, I completely agree. It's okay if we have to, you know, take medication while we're believing for healing, you know um with you know whatever it is that we're in faith about but mm -hmm. we still know that our father is a healer and we have we should be in faith for the manifestation of the healing i.e whether it be through it could be through medicine in some way that you know because physicians we have physicians in the bible but it could also be miraculous however he chooses to do it though we have to believe for that healing. So I, I'm saddened to hear too that a mother would, you know, just kind of accept that, well, I guess this is the way it's going to be. We can challenge that. And there are many miracles that have been accounted for to counter and show where God has absolutely healed. Um, That's you know, mental illness, you know, there's a lot of mental illness in the Bible. A lot of people don't know that. I mean, the man that was cutting himself with stones. I mean, I used to do social service many years ago. Mm -hmm. That sounds very familiar to me to some of the challenges that people have faced. So a lot of, you know, things could very well be some of the very things that we deal with in our world today that we could take to the throne and say, okay, Lord, you know, they say it's this, but I believe you for you know, complete healing in this area in my life. You know, I don't, I accept, I don't have to accept the finality of what's said to me. You know, your word says this, and I'm going to stand on this. So, anyway. Bigger. And, and that's part of the problem is we aren't in the word <laughs> enough. So we don't actually know what the word says. So when there is a lie, when there's blasphemy, when there is, uh, you know, something that is against the word, we don't even know it because we're not there, you know, 
And so we are fooled by the deceiver because we don't actually know our Lord and our Savior, you know? And so you constantly have to be, again, it's not, we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. We always have to be on our guard. We always have to have on that armor, you know? Um, so that we uh, can, we can fight with the word of God, you know? That gives us that solid footing yeah. that a lot of Christians, obviously, nobody saw the lie in that story. That was where I was so floored, you know, nobody saw the lie and uh, the deceit. Right. Um, so we have to be very careful what we come into agreement with. If we want it in our lives, then by all means, if we don't, then we're not going to, we may. The reality is, is we maybe have symptoms of, of whatever that is, but we're not going to live there. We're right. going to take responsibility, do the things that we can do, and then put it in the hands of the ultimate healer at the same That's time right. as in him. So, okay. Next. An object at rest stays at rest. So if we're sitting, it's actual science here. <laughs> if we're sitting on our butts, we fall into this depression because it's actually, we are not created that way. Dr. Andrew Huberman, Huberman, a neuroscientist with Stanford University says that one of the times that dopamine is released, which is a good, uh, feel good. It's a mood boosting neurotransmitter transmitter is when in the process of effort. So it is our effort that actually boosts our dopamine levels, which pulls us out of depression. If we are not in effort, if we are not doing that, and we were, we talked about that, uh, Proverbs 13, four, that sluggard, you know, who is sitting on his butt. He wants the things, but he's not willing to put in the effort, right? Um, so if we're not doing the things, then we are falling into that depressive state because we were created to grow. We were created for growth. We were created for effort. We were created to mature, to um, become what God, the, the, these, these warrior women that God created us to be. And we can't do that without effort, without growth, without that maturity that you receive from putting in that effort. With, you know, if we're not shining our light, what is, what, what is the absence of light? Darkness. Darkness. And so if you're in darkness, you are in depression. Because you are not willing to put in the effort. You are not willing to get out of your comfort zone. You're not willing to do it in fear. You're not, you know, not willing to get out there into the unknown. So you settle and wonder why you're depressed. So um, it's really not, it's not a mystery. A lot of, most of this is our own faults because we're, for all of the reasons that I have just talked about. Um, so another thing that uh, creates, creates uh, stress, anxiety, depression is messy, cluttered spaces. If you have messy space, if you've got a cluttered space, it equals a cluttered, messy, depressed, stressed out, anxious mind. You actually can't think straight if you're if you've got a mess all around you, and the worse the mess, the the worse the depression becomes. It actually the spaces that you're in the most, you need to have a nice, tranquil, clean, clutter-free space. When you lighten all that up, it lightens you up. It's a you can literally feel it, and if you if it just takes you know, you can do it 
some people have gotten to a place where they just look at their <laughs> their space and they're like, oh my gosh, massive overwhelm, just even thinking about it, right? But start with the main rooms, the main rooms that you're in. Start with one room that you need for your, your peace space, your, your, your time with God space, your tranquil space, your workspace, you know, clean it declutter it, make it pretty, <laughs> you know, make it the place you want to be, make it smell good. And, and it just chases all that depression away and then make all your spaces that way. If it takes 20 minutes, just, just take 20 minutes a day, you know, start that, you know, cleaning your spaces. And once you get into it, then you're going to go gangbusters because you're gonna see how cathartic it is to clean those spaces, I promise you. Just, you know, take it from me, messy spaces, messy mind. You know, it just, it's just killer. It's just, you can feel the weight of it. Lack of good connections and relationships. You don't, and the, sadly, one of the cause, things of depression is you don't want to be around anybody. <laughs> you know, you'd rather be by yourself. Like Jessica was saying, you, you don't want those connections. Um, and they're exactly what you need. You need those good relationships, those supportive relationships, those loving relationships, because that pulls you out. It's joy. It brings joy. God created us as relational beings. We need those relationships. It pulls us out of that soup that we're in, you know? Um, so it's essential that we develop those relationships. I know this has become a very social media world. Um, and we become more and more solitary and alone more than we have ever been. But it's essential that we start developing these close knit circles. Um, and one of the things that I'm trying to develop within our group as well is some place to come so we have that support group so that we can, you know, get that support that we need and that, that lift that we need in a, in a uh, Christian, God-fearing, you know, circle of wise mm. counsel and friendship with each other, because it's essential. If we don't have it, depression. Lack of sleep. Oh my goodness, I've got so much to go here. Okay, lack of sleep. Uh, I'm, I'm missing Asmina today. She said that she was a sleep therapist um, but, uh, one of the things, if you're not getting good sleep, uh, it causes depression. It causes stress. It causes anxiety. You're unable to handle, uh, what comes out to you every day because you're not getting that sleep you need. The less sleep you have, the higher your cortisol levels go up. Uh, the higher your cortisol levels go up, the lower your serotonin levels go down, uh, because you're not getting the sleep that you need. So you're unable to clear out those depressive, uh, uh, the depression that you're in. Um, also, when you're getting good sleep, it is restorative. You're, you're healing your brain. You're healing, uh, uh, you know, you're healing your body. You're healing cells. You're repairing cells. Um, so you have to have that brain repair yeah. at, during the night. So if you're not getting at least seven hours of sleep a night, uh, you, you need to put in uh, the work to actually to get that good sleep which there's more I could say on that. Um, you know, if you have trouble sleeping, that's a whole nother topic that we could also talk about to help you sleep. Um, like magnesium is good for helping you to sleep, chamomile tea before you go to sleep. Um, melatonin, if you're having trouble sleeping, but there's things, calming things that can help you sleep as well. Turning off your devices at least an hour before you go to bed at night, sleeping in a very dark room, all these things help you to sleep at night. Lack of good nutrition. If you do not have the proper fuel that your brain needs, your it causes depression. Um, you need to dump dump sugar. This this also leads to depression. Processed foods. Gluten is a known allergen that people are sensitive to can cause depression. So your diet is essential. If your gut microbiome is off. You've killed it with uh, antibiotics. 
um, or too much sugar, stress kills your gut microbiome. Um, you need to restore and regenerate your gut. You can do that with the fruits and veggies are essential. Most people don't have that in their diet. They live on processed foods. The more fruit and veggies that you have, the better. You need those prebiotics. They create uh, the probiotics. So you have to have that to create the to to help you create that healthy gut microbiome. Uh, fermented foods like sauerkraut and kombucha. Um, bone broth is recommended. I I don't know about the bone broth, but I know it's one of the things that are, is recommended for healing your gut. Aloe vera is good for healing your gut. Slippery elm is good for healing your gut but you need to have a healthy gut. If you don't, it actually causes anxiety, depression. Um, people do not realize that if you have a unhealthy gut, it causes a host of other things. One of them being neurological disorders. Um, so a healthy diet, healthy gut, essential. Fasting, we talked about this the other day. Um, you want to get to that 24 hours at least once a week. Um, it creates BDNF, which heals the brain. GABA, it, inc it increases your GABA levels, uh, which uh, helps to uh, decrease that de depression. Serotonin increases, do dopamine increases. It creates new stem cells. You need to, so it's essential to, if you want to heal yourself and get rid of that. Uh, depression, fasting is one of the best ways to do that. Well, it, one of the things that reasons that you have some of those bloating and, and uh, discomfort is people, one of the things I always recommend is you get, uh, see what you're allergic to as far, as far as foods go, because a lot of times, especially if you have a leaky gut, but um, You'll have food sensitivities. A lot of a lot of times, it can be gluten. Can be one of them. The other thing can be nightshades. So tomatoes can be killer. Um, various foods like that uh, because of your the state of your gut. So you do have to remove some of those things that are going to cause those sensitivities until you have healed your gut. So. So there, so yes, I agree that there, there can be serious food sensitivities when you have a completely jacked up gut. Um, so water, people forget to drink it. If you're not drinking it, it is the fuel that you need. It causes fatigue when you're not drinking it. There you go. That's right. It causes fatigue. It causes depression because your brain needs it. If you're not drinking enough water, some people don't like it, add lemon to it, add mint to it, add something to it that's going to interest you, you know, a squeeze in a lime, something along those lines, but you have to be drinking water, you know, keeping yourself hydrated all day long. Uh, exercise is essential. One of the reasons being is it gets oxygen to your brain. Okay, you, it's essential to get that oxygen to your brain uh, so that you, um, it makes your brain work better. You need to have that oxygen. It increases the BDNF also that helps to repair your brain. So obvious reasons, exercise, blood flow. Uh, it actually, it builds, it also creates new neurons in your hippocampus when you're exercising, but essential. Sunshine, you need sunshine. I love the summer. I hate winter. Winter causes me depression. <laughs> I've asked God why he hasn't answered me. But anyway, and I'm sure you probably others of you who love the winter, but you need that, that natural sunshine. It heals you. So you need to be getting at least 20 minutes of that a day. If you can, if not, you should be supplementing with vitamin D3. Um, getting out in the water, getting out in nature, it makes that depression go away. If you can just be outside and enjoying, enjoying the sunshine, the nature, um, walking, you know, just getting out every day, if you can, um, supplementation and I'm gosh, look at the time. Okay. Supplementation ash. These are things okay. to help with depression. So ashwagandha, it balances out your hormones. 
Rhodiola does the same thing. It's very similar to, to ashwagandha. Ginseng helps to, uh, also helps with the hormones, but it helps also to reduce that uh, uh, fatigue. It's an anti-inflammatory. So ginseng is very helpful. Ginkgo biloba, uh, very essential brain uh, nutrient. It also increases blood flow to the brain. So I, I recommend ginkgo biloba, omega-3s, and vitamin D, D3 that I said as well, and B12. B12 is also essential. I mean, the B vitamins, all of them are really helpful, but B12 helps to increase that energy levels that you need when you're uh, experiencing depression, because depression does tend to zap you of energy. Teas that I recommend, lemon balm, chamomile, ginseng's nasty. If you can drink it, all the power to you. I can't. Matcha tea. Matcha is uh, one of my favorite things to drink. It has got caffeine in it, but it's also got L-theanine in it, which helps. Uh, it's a mood booster and it gives you a calm caffeine instead of a jittery caffeine. So if you're going to drink caffeine, I recommend matcha all day long, which, which is a green tea. So now that was a lot and I didn't expect that to take me so long. Um, and I probably just barely scat scratched the surface, but the point of it is uh, depression is less about a chemical imbalance and more about uh, your mind, how you're not stepping up and into your purpose um, how you're not putting effort in, how you listen to the lies of Satan. We're fighting against, uh, you know, uh, not flesh and blood. Um, sitting there in your toxic thoughts, you know, coming into agreement with thoughts that are not things that you should not be coming into agreement with, focusing on the wrong things. It's essential that we turn that all around and use our mind for what God told us to use it for, to think on the good things and not let Satan hijack us and to step out and be the warrior women that God asked us and created us to be.